All right, so we've got our Raspberry Pi 5 unboxed. Let's go over and download the OS. Raspberry Pi OS. Here is the Raspberry Pi imager. Okay, so choose device. Oh, this is nice. I love this. Up it makes, this is super easy now. Raspberry Pi 5, that's what I got. Okay, so we're just picking Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. We're choosing the 500 gig SD card that I just installed. Go ahead and use that drive. It's gonna wipe everything off of that drive and set up Raspberry Pi OS. All right, so while that's cooking, let's talk about Linux-based operating systems. Now I chose the term Linux-based operating systems very intentionally. That is because Linux is a kernel. It's not an operating system. Linux is more of the core that the operating system is built on top of. So every Linux-based operating system is built off that same Linux core or kernel. So when you hear someone say, hey, I'm gonna install Linux on this machine, which I say all the time, it just means they're gonna install a Linux-based operating system. But I promise no gatekeeping here. If you wanna just refer to all the Linux distributions as Linux, as many do, please go ahead and do it. If someone wants to correct you, just link my channel. But here's a good analogy that ChatGPT helped me come up with to describe Linux distributions versus the kernel. All right, so go ahead and close your eyes and imagine a big culinary complex called Kernel Kitchen, a central, versatile kitchen that serves multiple restaurants. Let's call those three different restaurants Burger Bites, Taco Tech, and Pizza Ping, with each restaurant representing a different Linux distribution, or distro as we like to call them. Just like the kitchen handles all the important stuff, the Linux kernel handles processing and the managing of system tasks. The kitchen has various stations for all the different dishes that it will be preparing, such as grilling, baking, and frying. The same goes for the Linux kernel subsystems, like memory management process scheduling, and device control. Now on to the restaurants. Remember there are three restaurants using the same kitchen, a burger place, a taco place, and a pizza place. So each of these being a different restaurant, they'll offer unique menu items and dining experiences. Just like each Linux distro provides a unique set of tools, applications, and user interfaces. So even though they're all sharing the same kitchen, the dishes that come out to the various restaurants are completely different. Now these three restaurants aren't the fanciest in the world, but they are sit down and they do have a wait staff. And as you know, the wait staff acts as kind of the intermediary between the customers, aka the users and applications in Linux, and the kitchen, aka the kernel. They understand the unique style and menu of their respective restaurants and know how to communicate that with the central kitchen. They take orders, aka system calls, from the customer and translate them into actionable tasks for the kitchen, kernel kernel kitchen. And the customers in their Linux form just act as the users and applications. Customers like me aren't super picky and they'll eat from all three different restaurants. Some people are a little bit more picky. They find the restaurant they like and they stick with that one restaurant and it serves them perfectly for everything they need to do. You walk in, you sit down, you place your order, and placing your order is just like opening a file, browsing the web, or running a program. Alright, so now that we have Raspberry Pi OS all set up and ready to go, let's talk about sudo versus root user for a minute. Because in Linux, as the root user, you have complete control of the system and there are just a few commands with just a few words that can completely bork your system and make it unrecoverable. All right, so let's give an example of sudo versus root. We're gonna open our terminal application here. So we mentioned that we want to run a command, but we need to run it as root, like an important command, like an update command. So let's do apt update. It's giving me permission denied, permission denied, permission denied. That's because I am not logged in as root and I'm not using sudo. This is a higher level command that you need to run. So you need to be a higher level user to run it. So to actually update it, you'll type sudo apt update. Now what's gonna allow you to do it. Now I also mentioned being logged in as root. This is not being logged in as root. I am still logged in as a sudo user, as just a regular user, um, but I can run sudo to kind of ask permission and say, hey, can I run this? And usually it will ask you for like a password. This is an asking me for a password. I don't know if I have a password set, but generally in a more secure environment um, to run something as sudo, it usually asks you for a password at least once. Sudo su, no, I, I like to use sudo su dash. Yeah, there we go. And then I'll log in as root. So now I've changed my user from pi to root. And now I can run an update command without typing sudo at all. I can run any command and it won't ask me a second question about it. There's a command that you can run that will do a recursive deletion and basically delete every file on the system. It's a it's a meme in the Linux world. So if you ever go to like a Linux subreddit and ask like, hey, what's the command to do something? And it's super simple. You'll always see that command pop up in there. And um, it's a it's a command that will just delete your entire system. It'll go through every directory on the system and just delete everything. 
Um, so that's that's the power of being a root user is that if you're not careful, you could delete your system. All right, so let's talk about the file system hierarchy. So I'm gonna give you an example here. So let's go into our file system here. This is our file system. This is a fresh Raspberry Pi install. You see all these different directories. They all serve some sort of purpose, but for the most part, you know, you'll be interacting with like the downloads folder, the media folder. I should be able to edit files in here then. Okay, so let's go to documents. Let's go to home Pi documents new folder let's call it d d w d there we go okay that folder was just uh, that folder must be only accessible by uh, by root then all right so let's go dwd and then we're going to make a file in it let's call it um let's make a file and call it a uh, test and let's put some text in there and call it test oh we want to save it yes all right we have a directory called dwd in the documents directory and we have a file called test inside of there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back over to command prompt and let's go ahead and find it so ls stands for list it's the same equivalent of just opening up a folder in windows you open up that folder you see all the individual files laid out shows you exactly what's in that folder same concept list just shows you a visual representation in text of everything that's in that folder so we'll run ls and we see our folders we have bookshelf desktop documents documents so to get into the documents folder we type cd cd documents so now we're in the documents directory to prove this we just type ls again ls look what we see our folder named dwd so we're going to cd into that also so now we're in the dwd folder so you can guess what happens next we ls and we see our test folder how do you interact with that test folder some people like to use vim those people are crazy i like to use nano so type nano that opens up our test folder or test file and we see our test word that we typed in there we can add some more text to it new text escape is control x and control x it asks you do you want to save you can just type y enter and that's going to save the file back over to the dwd directory we're going to click on test and of course we see our new text we added via the terminal and that pretty much sums up file structure in my everyday work i'm constantly cd'ing lsing i use these commands all the time but there are of course commands i don't use all the time and that's why there's google i always just look it up it's not a big deal if you forget a command that's just because you don't use it that often i have one little networking command that i want to run that i run pretty often at work uh, to get back to our home directory the one we started in we can just type cd with nothing in it and it'll bring us back to where we started at the very beginning the networking command that i want to run is called if config very similar to ip config in windows so i'll type if config of course ethernet interface wi-fi interface i don't have ethernet connected right now that's why you see zero packets but I do have Wi-Fi connected, and that is why you see uh, quite a few more packets. This gives you a general representation, a snapshot of sort of the network interface, but this is more or less to confirm things like IP address, subnet mask, uh, default gateway, uh, MAC addresses. This is where you confirm all that stuff. If you've ever used ping before, it works exactly the same in Linux. Ping 8.8.8.8, that's Google, and we can make sure we can get out to the internet and ping Google. Works the same exact way, just like in Windows. The only difference is in Linux, it will continuously keep pinging forever until you uh, control C to stop it. Another little troubleshooting command I like to run also is just called top. So just type top, and that's gonna give you sort of a task manager view. It's gonna show you what tasks are running, what's using up CPU, what's, what's using up RAM. But if you're ever curious why your Raspberry Pi is running slow, you can check, okay, is this the network? Let me check if it's using too many resources. Just go in, type top, and it'll tell you, hey, you're using 100% CPU, you're using all your RAM, you need to dial it back. Or if it's telling you, you know, you're not using hardly any CPU, hardly any RAM, maybe check your network after that. All right, so let's go over some general maintenance best practices. As you saw earlier, I ran that update command. The update command doesn't necessarily update your system. It updates the list of sort of packages, we'll call them, in the system and updates and tells you basically what needs to be upgraded. It'll say, hey, there's updates available for all this stuff. It's sort of like in Windows when you kind of check for updates. That's what the update command does in Linux. Now to actually upgrade and actually apply those updates, you'll type the upgrade command, apt update apt upgrade since this is a fresh system there's nothing to update i installed the latest build of raspberry pi os so i didn't imagine there'd be much to update here so when we're done with our system when we upgrade it we'll do our update command do our upgrade command and then we reboot next step is just go out and make something I have a video here where I turned a Raspberry Pi 4 into a media server using a software called Jellyfin. If you're not ready for something more advanced like that, start here where I just kind of give a general idea of where to start with single board computers. Until then. Thank you.